Just to sort of touch on really some of the frequently asked questions that get raised when we're having conversations. Um, and certainly what that tends to do is surface some of the misconceptions that are out there in the marketplace as well. So the first question, the first burning question is how does escrow apply to software as a service? Most organizations say that, uh, you know, the cloud service providers and the vendors are doing a very good job of providing a more, a more robust service. And certainly you've got the, the tools and resources to be able to make sure that you've got um, some kind of uh, resilience model built in place. But really what we're talking about here is the, the uh, sort of risk of supply chain and the breakdown of that. So uh, it could be potentially be that the licensee has a relationship with the vendor, uh, but in most cases, the vendor relies on the cloud service provider to actually host that uh, actual cloud environment. And therefore the risk potentially be if that vendor is no longer uh, in play, how would the actual customer be able to access the data and potentially some of the cloud resources? Um, is escrow, is SaaS escrow necessary for large um, software as a service vendors? They're unlikely to grow out of business. That may be the case in terms of, we look at it from a traditional kind of perspective in terms of uh, historically, a lot of organizations would have put uh, some kind of escrow uh, provision in place to really mitigate the fact that we're engaged with a smaller vendor that presented some kind of risk. But really what we're talking about now is additional risk that potentially could be around the sale of IP or the, the delivery of service or uh, degradation of that service down to a number of different influences. And obviously cybersecurity and the issues with that are certainly more prevalent uh, in obviously the current state. How can SAS escrow complement an existing disaster recovery plan in place? And really what we're looking to do there is, is really augment uh, what's already in place and give um, a customer the ability to be able to have some kind of tangible access to not only source code, but potentially some kind of cloud artifacts and also uh, give them some kind of knowledge transfer uh, to be able to actually stand that solution, that cloud service back up in a reasonable time frame uh, in a disaster recovery situation. And lastly, what are, what are the responsibilities of a SaaS vendor for my application and data? And really that is um, something to be really reviewed in terms of uh, the actual agreement that was put in place in the first place. And also if we allude to the fact that, you know, most cloud providers will refer to a shared responsibility model and that is that they are responsible for the, um, the, the sort of uh, delivery of service and ensuring that there are a number of security uh, provisions in place. But in terms of uh, data security and also uh, supply chain risk in this situation, that is obviously down to the actual licensee to really look at that in more detail to see if there is the right provisions in place.